Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then hi, my name is Sumbul and I'm currently living in the Netherlands after having studied and worked in the UK for three years. So I get asked a lot of questions about the job options after completing a psychology degree in the UK. So without wasting any more of your time, let's dive into it. Before I tell you about the job options, I must clarify two very important things. Number one, uh, if you have a bachelor's degree in psychology, then know that most of the time that degree is not enough. I'm not saying that you will never get a job after a bachelor's degree in psychology. It's just that either there will not be much growth in your career with just a bachelor's degree um, or it is possible that most of the time the jobs that you're looking for, they are asking that you need to have at least a postgrad degree. Number two, if you are an international student and you have a bachelor's degree in psychology from your home country or you have a bachelor's degree in some another subject, for example, computer science, maybe economics, maybe some other subject, then conversion programs is the route. Why? Because you need GBC membership, especially if you want to get into practice and conversion programs give you that. I've made an entire video on conversion programs in the UK, so I highly, highly recommend that you go and watch that out. So just like any other field in psychology as well, I believe you have majorly three options in terms of jobs and careers. First is research, second is clinical practice, and third is the industry jobs. If you're interested in research and you want to work in academia, then you need a minimum of PhD. Uh, you can look for research assistant jobs after a bachelor's degree or a master's degree so that you have some experience for your PhD applications. But remember that cracking into academia and getting a RA jobs after a bachelor's degree or a master's degree can be tricky and it can be tough, especially if you are an international student and you do not have a lot of background already. Usually you are expected to have some experience with statistical analysis softwares, uh, participant recruitment, data collection, academic writing and literature review and the list can go on depending on the project. Uh, you can look for these jobs like RD jobs at your university but other universities as well. And people also say that you should do networking and it's very, very important. It goes a long way. And I think all of this is very true. But trust me when I say that it doesn't matter how much networking you're doing. If you don't have the right skills in research, then it's going to be very, very difficult to crack into academia, as I mentioned before. But if you guys have something else to say about this, something different, or you want to add or talk about your experience, then please feel free to comment below. If you're interested in clinical practice and you want to become a clinical psychologist, then you need a minimum of TCLINSCI degree, which is doctorate in clinical psychology. In the UK, having an experience of an assistant psychologist is very important to get admitted into DCLINSCI programs. <clears throat> but remember that these jobs can be tricky, especially if you're international. Um, I'm sorry to say this, but yeah, that happens. I think it's just basic economics. There's more demand, but there's less supply. But what can you do? You can start with the entry level jobs, such as the support worker jobs and the healthcare worker jobs. And you can look for these jobs in the NHS, but also mental health charities and the private healthcare companies. Mainly the nature of these jobs is that you have certain clients and uh, that depends on how many clients you can take and you're sort of looking after them, you're looking after their needs. You might be asked to take them to their appointments, um, take them to parks through uh, or look after their medications you might also be asked to take them through public transportation sometimes you might also be asked whether you are happy and comfortable looking after the personal hygiene but usually they ask you this question during the interview and you can say whether you are comfortable doing that or not uh, watch my video that i had made with a friend on these support worker jobs and she had worked as a support worker back in edinburgh for a long time so yeah i'm sure you're going to learn a lot from that video so definitely definitely check that out something similar goes if you want to become a counseling psychologist and not a clinical psychologist and the specific degree is called Sci, which is doctorate in clinical psychology but i'm not very sure about the entry level jobs in this field but just remember if you want to become either a clinical psychologist or a counseling psychologist, you need a minimum of these degrees because through these degrees only you get a license to practice either as a clinical psychologist or a counseling psychologist. Also, it is very important to know that you, after these degrees, you can work in the NHS or you can have your own private practice. But for the internationals, the process is a bit tricky and different. Uh, what do I mean by that? So. For the NHS funded DCLINSCI programs, 
you are required to work for more than 20 hours as part of being a trainee psychologist but you will be on a student visa and your student visa will not allow you to work for more than 20 hours so most of the time international students are not eligible for these nhs funded programs so what do you do you end up self-funding your entire degree which i think personally is not financially feasible because you're paying your international tuition fee for like four years and then you're paying for extra expenses like you need traveling expenses in case you want to attend any conferences be it within the uk or outside the uk and also you end up uh, paying your living expenses so you are just paying you're just spending money from your own pocket but you're not actually getting any stipend so if you're someone who's neither interested in research not clinical practice but you want to get into industry you want to work in school you want to work in mental health charities then you can obviously look for jobs in these areas i don't have any personal experiences with jobs in these areas but yeah you should know that there are options in these areas as well such as working as a behavioral scientist behavioral analyst ux designer science communication um like some people work in science communication some work in journalism and some also uh, work in human resources like there's so so many options uh, some people also work in secondary and the primary schools like as teaching assistants or helping in creating resources for children or some people also work directly with children uh, who may be neurodivergent or may have some behavioral difficulties as a general note no matter which area you want to get into be it research clinical practice or an industry job just remember that the process is not going to be easy, it is going to be difficult because everything is competitive in this world and age. Okay, that is all I could think of for this video but if you guys have any specific doubts or you want me to make a separate video on any aspect that I've covered in this video then please please feel free to comment below. Uh, I really really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please hit the like button share this video, subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell so that you know instantly whenever I upload a new video. Until then, take care and stay happy.